exercise 7. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at the functionality in Creo and how we could generate something like this. This is like a grill that you would see over for over a fan that would go on the back of a computer. And so we'll see how the freeform tools allow us to create something like this and then some additional tricks on the way too. So let's begin. I'm just going to start with a, a new part file and we'll call it E7 and hit OK. Now from here, let's go ahead and start on the front plane a sketch. I'm going to go to AB and I'm going to click on front just so I'm normal too. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the line tool. And from the center, draw up a little line. I'm going to middle click a couple times. This is just going to get me to scale. I'm going to hit 2. I'm going to go ahead and um, once I typed in and it zooms up, I'm going to click on the 2 and delete it to make it a weak dimension because that's going to change in just a minute. But it was just to get me kind of to the scale that I need. All right. Now in the book, we need to create this geometry that we see here. So it's really four inches from the center to the bottom. And we're going to make the little foot pad that goes on one of the four corners of that grill. This would be where the screws would fasten it down. So this is kind of a freeform shape, and uh, it's, it's rather interesting how we generate it. So we're going to start off by sketching off the top here. Go to the arc tool and find center and ends. You might want to zoom out a little bit on this just so the line is down here. Now I'm going to move my pointer up a little bit away from the vertex of the line and then click, drag it down and connect. Click again and drag to the right and go counterclockwise until around the 7 o'clock area, area right there. So around at 7 o'clock, you can click, and so you have a little opening. Middle click a couple times. Now we're going to go to the dimension tool. So go to normal, and we're going to dimension between the two centers, or I should say the center here and this bottom vertex, and the middle click. And that's going to be 4. And then you can middle click a couple times. And this next dimension, this radius, is going to be 1.5. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the center line tool. And I want to dimension a center line, or put a center line from the center point to this vertex. The middle click. Middle click a couple times. And that's going to be 15 degrees. Okay. Now at this point we need to put a fillet in, and the sketch fillet is, works really well here. And so there's, um, we're going to go with circular. And what you do is you click a little bit down below here on the vertical line, and then a little bit into this line here. Click. Middle click a couple times to get out of the tool, and then just double click on that dimension and change it to one inch. Okay, at this point, we have everything we need. We could go ahead and we're going to exit out of here. Just hit OK. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a tool to bend this wire down onto and essentially kind of form our shape in three dimensions. So we're going to start by drawing on the right plane this time and start a sketch on it and go normal to the right plane by clicking on this, the AB button, go to right, and then take the line tool and right at the origin here, click and drag up a short little horizontal line click again, drag an angled line, kind of like at 45 degrees, and maybe about an inch in length. So right about there looks pretty good. We'll, we'll dimension it, so if you're not exact, don't worry about it. Click here, and that's supposed to be a vertical, horizontal. Okay, and so we get some of the dimensions here, and you can see in the book here, we are now on this section here, so we're going to go ahead and put in some of these different uh, dimensions, like 130 degrees, this dimension. If you don't get this dimension, remember you can click on the normal dimension. Just to show you, you can click on this line and this line, and the middle click, and it will override whatever dimension's there. So it's supposed to be 130. And then we'll go ahead and I'll put some fillets in on here before we go any further. Actually, I guess we can put this dimension in from here to here, and the middle click. 
It's supposed to be one inch. And that's about all we could do for right now until we get the fillets. So go to the sketch fillet tool up here. Or circular fillet, I should say. Click on this line down here a little bit, and then over here. And then if you have room, you could click on this one to this one. And then just double click on those, make those one each. Okay, now the overall length dimension should appear here, but um, we're going to go with a little bit different variety here. Like this one right here, this one point, mine is 1.22, yours might be a little bit different. Double click on that, that should be 1.7. If it's not there, go ahead and dimension from the bottom edge to the center point of that arc. Okay, and as we see in the book, um, we're going to go ahead and dimension from this tangent edge to the top of 2.25. So make sure normal's on. So you can actually just click on this line. Click here, 2.25. Now if you want, you can lay these out. Middle click a couple times to get out of any dimension you might be in. Or tool, I should say. And that ought to do it. At this point, I think we're ready to go ahead and we're going to extrude this. So, go to the OK tool, and we're going to make an extrusion. And you see it makes a surface. Now we need this surface to extend to beyond the boundaries of that, that wire for this tool. So make sure extrude surface is on. It should be on by default. But then over here to the right of that, hit this little arrow and find the mid plane option. Extrudes on both sides of the sketch plane. Grab one of these little white dots here and drag it out. Now you could type in like five inches or something as well, but it doesn't really matter for our tool here. I think five uh, inches works really well though. Go ahead and hit the green check mark. And so now we have our tool to bend it, the wire on. Now if you want, remember, if you have a lot of planes and things showing up, you could turn these off. But actually we do want the planes on uh, because it's going to help us in just a second when we have to add this next tool in here. The next tool that we need to select here is going to be the um, projection tool. So go ahead and select project. And over here click on references. Now we have project chains, but we want to project a sketch. Go ahead and click on project sketch and select that wire that we drew. Now the surfaces over here, click in this box and proceed to hold control and select all of these surfaces that make up that tool that we built. Now click in directional reference or direction reference and just click on the front plane. That's why I had to turn the plane back on. Now you see the wire bending, and that's fine, but just flip the arrow to be on the safe side. Sometimes this little line segment doesn't show up if you don't get that flip. And go ahead and hit the green check mark to apply. And there's our wire, and it should be bent conforming to the surface of our tool that we built. Now I could go ahead and turn off, the, well we'll actually leave the plans on for a moment here. But we can hide the surface. We could actually click on the surface one time, release it, then hold down the right mouse button for about two seconds, and you'll find hide. That will hide the surface. The next thing we want to do is we're actually going to draw at the end here. Now, honestly, we could turn off the planes at this point. And we want to draw a sketch right at the end point here of a little circle for our wire thickness, and it will sweep along. So before we do that, we need to go to the sweep tool. Find sweep and just click on sweep and select near the end of that but not on the end point. And it should give you some little arrows and that's good if the arrows are pointing this way. You could always flip the arrows if they're the wrong direction. But once that's selected you'll find the sketch tool to create this uh, section sweep that's there. Click on that. And now at this point we could go just to the circle tool and at that origin click and drag out a circle middle click a couple times. Make it 0.5. Now I know 0.5 is kind of thick for a wire. I just use basic numbers that were easy to remember. So technically this would be a lot smaller in real life. This is actually the size of a real like barbecue grill, but this isn't meant for a barbecue grill. This is just for the class. Okay, once you have that circle drawn and set to 0.5, go ahead and hit OK. And it should sweep along. And you can hit the green check mark again to apply it. And there is our little foot pad. Okay, we could have drawn this whole section out, basically, but we're gonna. I kind of chose to go in small chunks, so you could grasp the concepts a little bit. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna select the front plane and start a sketch on it, 
and again go to the AB button, go to front, and we need to make an extension on this. Again, we could have done this early on, earlier on and drawn the whole thing out, but I just thought it was easier this way. Let's go to the line tool and glide up to that origin there and click and drag out a horizontal line. And then middle click a couple times, and that's going to be seven inches. Let me just verify that on our print here. Yes, that's supposed to be seven inches, as you can see in the book. So we have seven inches long, and then we're going to put a little hook on here that's at 45 degrees, one inch radius. So for that, go to the Arc Tools and find Three Point Tangent End. Click on it. Click on the vertex of that little line. Click and drag straight down and to the left. Let it hook a little bit. Don't go to full 90, though. You don't want that. You want less than 90 degrees. Click again and middle click two times just to make sure you're out of whatever tool might be there. Change the radius to one inch. And now let's go over here to the center line tool and draw a center line between the vertex there and the center point. And then middle click again. You should get an angle dimension. If you don't get the angle in here, go to the normal tool and click on the center line and this line to get it. Because that needs to be 45 degrees. What we're doing is we're going to sweep this along and then we're going to mirror it across once we have our elbow and generate a full 90 degree elbow. So once we have those dimensions in place, you could hit OK. And now we could go back to the sweep tool. Go ahead and select near this end over here and find the sweep tool. Now if the arrow is pointing over on this end, that means it's going to go ahead and start the sketch on that end. However, we want to steal this edge parameters and link it to it. So if we ever change the point 5 of this main part, this part of this section updates as well. So click on the little arrow and it should put the arrow over on this side. As long as the arrow is over on this side, you're in good shape. And now click on sketch, create or edit sweep section. At this point, zoom up to this area, and we're going to use a projection. So if you click on Project, uh, it'll give you some options here. Just leave it at Single, and you can click on both of these edges, the top and bottom, and then hit OK. And it should sweep it along automatically for you. You can hit the green check mark if, if you like what you see. All right, at this point, we're going to mirror it across. So if you hold Control and select the sweep one and sweep two, you could go up to the mirror tool and then over here it's looking for a reference plane. This little end face is a nice flat surface for a reference. Go ahead and select that and hit the green check mark. And it should generate your 90 degree elbow now and it mirrored everything over. So you can see in the mirror included both sweep one and sweep two. So I had to control select sweep one and sweep two, go to the mirror tool, then select the end face and apply. All right, the next thing we have to do for this is we're going to start making the concentric rings, as you can see here, and their position here. It's going to be the same thickness as the wire. So let's go and select the right plane and start a sketch and go to AB to go normal to. You can click on right. Now go up here to this option and select wireframe and zoom down here to the bottom. What we need to do is capture this elbow. And uh, so we're going to use the project tool and select this edge. And the reason for that, once I select the edge, it projects it. And now we could actually take the center line. And off that center point, we have now located the center of our uh, model. So basically, at this point, we're going to revolve around that in a second once we draw the circles. So go to the circle tool and start the first circle on this side. Remember, the circle is going to be where it starts bending in, down. So it's on the bottom versus the top here. We don't want the top. So right about here, click and drag out a circle. Now let the circle, um, if you get the little R, that means it's going to make it equal to this radius. And that's actually perfect because it's all 0.5. So let it go with that. Notice that also this, it's digging into the part a little bit. You could always move that later on. Just don't get a little T. You don't want it to go tangent to that edge. And then go over here and infer to that. Click and drag on another one. And then you're going to click and drag out two more. And I'm just kind of uh, spacing them. 
once I can middle click, I can then go ahead and change the spacing. According to the print, they need this to be spaced um, 0.125, the very first one from the center, and then 2.5 typically. So let's go ahead and see what we got here as far as dimensions. Like there's one that's be 1.25 from the center line there. And then we have this one here. This is going to be actually um, be 2.5. So we could do 2.5 plus the 1.25 if we wanted to do that. So it's 3.75. Or we could actually just dimension it off of this edge. So let's say this one here. If I go to normal and select this to this, then I'll click. That'll be 2.5. And then from here to here, this will be 2.5 as well. If you wanted to, you could delete this one and just be consistent and select the center point to this one. And that'd be 2.5. Middle click a couple times to get out of the dimension tool. If you want to line these up, you can. All right, now as far as this dimension right here, actually, um, 0.48 or 0.49 works really well. I'm going to go with 0.48 so it digs into the part a little bit. If it's Tangent on the edge, you might have some uh, error messages saying it cannot generate that geometry because it's a zero thickness connection point. So, anyhow, now that we're done with that, we could hit OK and then go to the Revolve tool. Now, for the Revolve tool, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, placement, uh, actually, the axis. Okay, I made a little mistake here. I forgot I wanted to delete this edge that we copied over here. So let's cancel that out for a second. And we need to edit that sketch. So the sketch that's at the bottom of the tree, just right click and edit the definition of it. Okay, just click on that little arc at the bottom. We have a little half arc and hit delete. And what we'll do, we'll leave a reference geometry instead. Now we could go ahead and hit OK. And then if we go to Revolve, it should automatically pick up on it. If not, uh, you could pre-select that little center line that we drew. But since there's only one center line in there, it should automatically pick up. At this point, we don't want to go full 360 degrees. You could, and then you could pattern this if you wanted 180. But I want to show you a different technique here. So for the uh, options here, go to Options. First of all, we're going to go with Variable. And instead of... 360 degrees, let's go with 45. And then over here, click on None and change it to Variable. And then we're going to go in 135, which if you add 135 to 45 equals a full 180 degrees. So we're making 180 degrees of this geometry. Now if this is reversed for some reason, if this doesn't look quite right where it's centered, uh, you could flip these two numbers. But anyhow, um, that looks correct. We're going to go ahead and hit the green check mark to apply. So now we have exactly one half of our grill. What you want to do at this time is hold control and select all of the sweeps that you see here and revolve. Go to the mirror tool, select one of the little end faces to mirror it across and hit the green check mark. And that ought to do it for you. And there you can see we have our grill completed. And it should be symmetric. If it's not symmetric, take a look at some of your geometry. It might actually be the revolve. If you right click on the revolve and edit the definition, you might have to flip that 45 degrees and 135 or make sure that you have those numbers accurately put in there. And that completes exercise 7.